Okay, let's talk a bit about the Opus Prime stockbroking collapse. Stephen, brought down by too aggressively being a margin lender and a stock lender? Uh, well, that's exactly right. I think far more about the margin lending than the stock lending. Uh, basically, they were the lender of last resort for uh, stocks outside the ASX 300. Uh, if you were a director or you were a rich lister or you were someone who wanted to play in the more speculative space, then Opus was your house that you went to to borrow from. Particularly after the collapse or, or the near collapse of Tricom, Opus took on a lot of their book and uh, we had a basic situation of, uh, of $2 billion worth of stock supported by a $1 billion worth of loans from 1,200 wealthy Australians, a series of margin calls across some prominent people, uh, the biggest I think being uh, the Sydney criminal lawyer Chris Murphy, who the Fin Review has mentioned today uh, as uh, suffering margin calls through Opus, and uh, the firm has collapsed because a series of margin calls from a series of prominent people haven't been met. And where this is really going to hurt and where this collapse is a whole lot different to, to any one we've seen before is that the 1,200 clients now collectively have to pool all their shares and hand them over to the banks and those 1,200 people will have to wear the losses of the individual people who got margin called inside Opus. So if Chris Murphy, for instance, has lost... 10, 20 million, you don't know the figure, it's just he, he's out there as one of them, then all the other clients have to wear that and now the whole portfolio will be in, involved in a fire sale and those 1,200 wealthy Australians will collectively drop hundreds of millions of dollars on this and it's a, it's a remarkable story. All right, now that seems incredibly unfair. That seems incredibly unfair and yet would those investors have gone in knowing that this was the case and that this was a relatively risky sort of business? Well, I, I suspect that many of them didn't read all the fine print and appreciate that this is what's going to happen, but most of them are actually sophisticated players. I mean, a, a good example was a, there's a, there's a guy called Phil Thomas, who's a director of Admiralty Resources, and he owned $5 million worth of stock, uh, and he had a $2.8 million loan from Opus. Now, he got cleaned out yesterday. Those shares got sold, 20 million crossed on the market, the share price fell by 20% and he won't even get his money back. He won't even get his $2.2 million of equity that he thought he had back. Instead, he's just in the creditor pool with everyone else. And I reckon a guy like Phil Thomas would be, would be surprised to know that that is how things have worked out, that the stockbroking firm going under has literally given the banks, Merrill Lynch and ANZ, the complete whip hand to control the full $2 billion portfolio and they are just liquidating at a fire sale uh, now and uh, I guess the banks don't really care about the clients because the banks just want to get their billion dollars back. Yep. You're watching Business View and plenty more to come now. I wanted to ask Stephen about, just to finish off on that um, Opus stockbroking, a kind of disaster really. Stephen, where do you think, what do you think is the main lesson to be learned that we know so far? Well, I think this will be the, the high water mark of uh, uh, the concerns about debt. You just literally can't borrow money to buy uh, too many uh, speculative stocks. 